Hi, my name is Noel. This is my grandson Isaac. Say hi, this is my, hi, this is my grandpa Noel. <laughs> when I was a nine year old kid, like my grandson is now, the world looked bright. My dad had a shiny new 1955 Pontiac. World War II and the Korean War were behind us, and the world seemed full of a can do spirit and hope for a brighter future. Now, 53 years later, the future seems bleak and dangerous, and there's a certain level of pessimism all around us. Many of us aren't so sure human life will even be here 53 years from now. The mission of Patchworks is essentially to create an outdoor learning laboratory where students and adults and kids can come and learn ways that we can create a lifestyle that is more sustainable. The idea is to get in touch with what is available to us locally, local resources. Katrina Delgushkin, live here at Patrick's Farm. Uh, the most rewarding thing about being on Patrick's Farm is just getting out here and planting. I love to plant and I love to see everything growing. Yeah, helping out and feeling useful. <laughs> yeah. I planted potatoes over here in the garden because like, I noticed a knoll. I asked him if he had potatoes and he's like, no, we never really thought about it. So I was like, can I plant some? And, he said, yeah, so it was pretty cool to like, actually bring like, some of what I do up there, down here to school, because I'm just going to school down here for an ag business degree. I like the thought of like, growing your own food, you know? It's like really, it's kind of senseless to go to a store and like pay all that money and stuff, and for 99 cents you can buy a sack of seeds, and it's like, you can plant all this stuff, you know? It's really awesome, I don't know. I like that, and I like, like just being outside. I hate the <laughs> thought of like, being caught up in a cubicle. Talk to or... the camera about your solar project. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Both of us were both partners for a senior service project and uh, we started over at St. Rose School back in the beginning of school. Uh, we were teaching the sixth graders during their science class about the environment and then uh, Tyler kind of introduced us up here. We, want, we taught them, you know, kind of the book smarts and now we right. wanted to move into the street smarts as far as applying what we've taught them in a larger sense. That way they can go home, you know. What we hope and what uh, seems to be relevant is the kids going, hey mom, dad, can we get a compost pile going? This is Lucas Michael Topolos live at Patchworks Farm. I started my junior year of high school, actually inspired from the seniors before us. They uh, made a biodiesel van, the van right there. And then so me and my friend decided, well, we want to continue this green movement here and we wanted to try to create an ecological learning center. So we decided to install the solar panels over there. And first we had a lot of ideas for funding, including uh, we wanted to like, have a dance and all this stuff, but uh, we ended up finding a grant and I applied for it and wrote for it and uh, it was from State Farm Insurance and uh, it was like allied with the local YMCA and we got $39,000, a little over $39,000. Uh, 
hopefully we'll get more next year and more next year and we'll just be able to build upon the program. We really want the Youth Advisory Board to spread out to the community and kind of affect all schools and get the whole entire community involved in it. We were doing this garden and then I was watching news one night and I saw Michelle Obama working with children planting an organic garden. And I thought, wow, at the White House. You know, and I thought, this is what we're doing here. And I remember coming into Marlena and Nolan, I said, I think that makes it more exciting for the kids because when they come here, you can say, wow, you know, that's the same thing that's happening at the White House. Noel taught me a, a, a good lesson when we were talking about service. And I said, Noel, we really want to build in service into our school, you know, how do we do that? And he said, you already are. And I asked him how, and he says, well, you do it every day because what, you, what you're doing is you're teaching the children. When they go out and tend the garden, they're serving. When the elder child learns to take care of the younger child, they're serving, and so service actually becomes real. I've been working with service learning for years as a teacher. I always take kids out, and then how do you apply that to the curriculum? And now I think we have it backwards. I think we have to start with the farm and then go to the classroom. That's the kind of, that's the kind of state of mind we're in. Because right now, as we, as we start in the classroom and then come out to the farm, the farm doesn't initially make much sense. It's like an extracurricular activity. And you want to get it so it is not an extracurricular activity, but that it is a... The, the people get the sense that we need to learn how to manage our environment, or we're going to disappear. Fa la 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 la, we stand on solid ground, on solid ground. Fa la 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 la. I think that we're free here at charter schools to pursue Anybody education to and the pursuit of knowledge through joy, which so many teachers aren't allowed to, because they're so they're forced to follow political mandates, and they're it, they're heartbroken about it. I know every teacher that's in a more mainstream school is heartbreak and that's all I hear is the heartbreak and they want to be doing this but they feel their hands are tied. Oh God, so yeah, charter yeah, schools are sort of given the chance to show that you can do it through joy and studying life, real things because you know things do stick in your head if you've learned it in a very natural context. When I recall my own life at age nine during the summer of 1956 I feel somewhat comforted by the fact that the park where I played on a little league team is still there and kids are still playing baseball. I can go to Portland and visit the house where I grew up. I visited that house recently with my oldest son and a niece and the same wallpaper was on the walls in the dining room and kitchen. I stood with them in front of the house and could show them my grade school and nearby high school and the church down the street where my dad was a pastor. The great part of this whole thing is that it is all still there. I feel a sense of comfort that comes from a sense of place, of meaning, of roots, of family, of home. And with that comes a deep security that ultimately everything is okay. I wish I could assure my grandson of the same for his life. That's pretty cool. Look at that one down there. In 1956, when I was nine, the world's population was 2.5 billion. Now, our world population is 6.7 billion. When Isaac turns 50, the population is expected to peak at around 9.3 billion. A million tents and trailers will cover the open desert. Your kids will learn again how to build a fire, where to look for water, and the families are bound together now by the fall of all the great cities. Finally, to sing out their stories and the histories of hunger and of victories back into the old gypsy circles where the swaying girls will play out the old rituals the boys will be delirious but desperate and serious the chasing will be furious the drums in the rain are gonna come together howling the cities are all lost but the circle is found and tie us together ooh my kind of town to work with the children growing up in this uncertain time and help them find answers to those serious questions about our prospects. 
These are the questions we need to insert into our educational system, and these are questions we should make a priority of our time. Patchworks Farm is on a path to foster optimism and reliance on human spirit that has the will to transform itself, to keep life going and create a livable future for our children. Most of my energy comes from a deep emotion to let Isaac know that I did what I could at this stage of my life to keep this beautiful little blue ball still habitable for him and his family. I hope you can visit Patchworks. I hope you can visit Patchworks with his own grandchild when he's when he <clears throat> when he's 62, and that there will still be a lot to live for, and people willing to find a way to make it work for everyone. Who were you before the fall? I was a singer, saw the future laid out in dominoes. Now I hunt the buffaloes, and my darling, who were you? Behind the counter with the day memorized And those cold vacant eyes Well, you swore you were free Swore you could see him coming It was old angel midnight Staring you down He's stealing the water right out of the ground And the news is all true But the views are unsound the market is dead and the phone lines are down But it ties us together Ooh, my God